Okay guys, well, one of the next big steps in the process here of this 302 budget build is of course, the valve train. Right now we got some uh, valve covers uh, on here temporarily to keep any dust and debris off the spring area while I do the video. Uh, but you'll notice here we got two bolts just kind of sitting in here. And these are responsible for the valley spider that holds in your dog bones, uh, which basically retain your roller lifters from twisting side to side. So I wanted to get a good shot of this right now before we do anything in here. This is a clean and oiled valley. Uh, all the lifter chambers have been cleaned uh, prior to this video. Everything is lint free and debris free. Uh, and let's take you over here. Here's the first step in the process. Those two screws go with this. I took and uh, degreased my uh, dog bones. These are existing. You're gonna be using these parts again, so don't throw these away when you disassemble your, uh, your, your uh, valve train. But these dog bones and this spider are going to be reinstalled with brand new Ford Racing roller lifters. So I want to just kind of get a shot of this right now uh, and then I'll show you what, I, what you have to do first with your hydraulic roller lifters before you even think about putting them back into the block. So let's go ahead and get that out now. In this can, this coffee can, is uh, conventional oil and these are the roller lifters that have been soaking in this oil for about one week. Uh, and the point of doing this is basically to get all the air out of the lifters prior to installing them into the motor. It's a very important process, so get yourself a can, get yourself some oil, and don't be rushed to do this because they do need to soak for quite a while. I think manufacturer recommendation is 48 hours, but I always go overkill. So these have been in here for about a week, so these are going to be ready to go. This is the box that the rollers came out of. These are Ford Racing M6500-R302. Tappet hydraulic rollers, made in Mexico. Uh, this is the first time uh, using the Ford Racing products that I've really actually paid attention to this, and I'm really kind of upset that a lot of their stuff isn't made in the USA. It's kind of deceiving, but supposedly gonna be good quality, so we will see. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, this is what we're gonna be working with here. So let's go ahead and get this set up, and I'll show you how to drop these bad boys into place. Okay, here we are looking at the front of the block. And here's uh, my latex gloves here. And what I basically do is have a clean workspace here off camera where I uh, can get my hand into the uh, oil bath here with the lifters and I can go ahead and install them here into the block. So what I've done is just pull out one lifter. I'm letting it kind of just drip off so I don't make a mess all over the garage uh, into the oil can. And here is the lifter. And you'll notice that there's a little roller ball here at the tip of the lifter. That's going to be the part that goes down into the engine. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and uh, some of these are a little difficult to drop in because you got your head there in the way. So you just kind of work it around the back of the head and then you just drop it into place like that. And it's, it's a fairly straightforward process. So uh, just a little time consuming is all. Uh, you, you're really, it's really just a matter of waiting for the waiting for the lifters to kind of drip off so you're not making a mess everywhere uh, and then getting them into the actual engine. So uh, again, you're going to be, uh, make sure you use latex gloves because you don't want any, any contaminants or anything on here. It's almost like doing surgery. You want to make sure you're, you're real neat in here. The, the last thing you want is uh, foreign materials inside your valley and inside your lifters because that's where a lot of friction happens in the engine. And uh, that's the first place we can combat it, uh, is uh, by making sure we're clean. So this is just a process that's basically rinse and repeat. And you'll notice that some lifters will remain higher than others, and that's because uh, it all depends on the rotation of the camshaft inside the engine. If the, uh, if the lobe of the camshaft is coming up higher in certain spots than the other, depending on its rotation, you're going to notice that certain lifters will be either higher or lower. So. I'm going to go ahead and continue to install this. I'll probably speed up the footage so I don't bore you to death, uh, but you can get the idea uh, of how this actually works, and you can be confident enough to do it in your garage. So again, there's a look at the roller ball right there, and there's the flattened area of the groove uh, where the uh, dog bone will sit. And I'll show you there. And there's your ball right there. And that's basically all a lifter is. It's hydraulic and that's what the push rod sits against and it moves up and down. And the roller uh, rolls against the camshaft. And the difference between a roller motor 
and a standard flat tappet motor is the fact that you do have the roller ball on the end of the lifter and it, and it creates less friction, more horsepower, uh, and just overall better performance. That's why uh, with any of these budget builds that I do, I always try to make sure I use a roller motor because it's just, in my opinion, I, I like them better. So uh, anyway, okay, let me speed up the footage here and I'm gonna keep installing this stuff. which is again a very simple process. I like to kind of dip the dog bones back into the oil uh, that I was using earlier here and I'll go ahead and uh, bring that oil can on camera so you can see it. Basically I just give it a little, little dunk here in the can and there's a side on it that says up. Make sure it's facing up. And basically you're going to put this on here just like you would put a wrench on a, on a nut and it just slides on uh, to the actual lifter very easily and the reason why I'm putting these in oil is because we did use some degreaser to uh, to clean them and we want to make sure that we don't have any corrosion while the engine is just kind of sitting here waiting for us to finish it because we do have some time consuming steps in the process here soon we're going to be doing uh, my favorite part which is the push rod length de determination uh, where we use our push rod length checker in here and we uh, we figure out exactly uh, how long our push rods need to be. So that's a process where it kind of leaves the engine hanging for a little while while you're waiting on those to come in. So you always want to make sure everything's good and looped up. So again, this is just basically rinse and repeat here. We're just popping these on. So I'm going to go ahead and finish these up and then we'll jump over to the next step here. go. So now move our oil out of the way and with the remaining oil on your hands go ahead and uh, lube up the spider to prevent any corrosion. Don't cut your gloves. There you go. And this is uh, again straightforward. These little retainer pieces, they sit down onto the dog bone. Uh, there's like a little boss on the dog bone, or whatever you want to call it, and that sits on there. And then the uh, when you torque your bolt down, that's what keeps tension on everything. So I'm just basically taking the screws now, I'm gonna run them down the center here, and you got to put a little pressure on the spider, and don't cross thread anything, so take your time. Got that one started well, I believe. Let's go ahead and get the other one here. Push down with equal pressure. And these screws should show zero resistance. You have oil in here. You have every part is clean, hopefully. If you're following my instructions. So if you feel any resistance at all, stop. Back the screw back out, take your time and thread it back in. The last thing you want to do at this stage of the game is have to drill and tap that screw to a bigger thread and then have shards of metal everywhere because then you got to take everything out again. So those are hand tight. I'm going to go ahead and grab my wrench, torque those down, and we're going to call that done. Okay, we've got a 7 16 wrench. And we're simply coming in here really carefully. And we're just going to torque it down. 
And don't go smacking the wrench into the heads and stuff. You don't want to nick anything. And the key is to all this is just taking your time, not being in a rush. If you know you're going to be pressed for time, don't do it. Because the end result will be desirable if you do all this the right way. And they're a little bit long, the screws, and there we go. Now we got tension, and I just go a little extra turn there. About a quarter of a turn extra, and we're going to do the same thing on this side. And that's going to wrap up the installation, guys. Thanks for watching the video. As always, have a great day, and go to 302budgetbuild.com. Okay, guys, that's going to wrap it up. I just wanted to do this final footage here. Kind of take you for a ride here into the valley. So you can see how everything looks when it's properly installed. And you're gonna have oil in here, and that's fine. You want it to be clean and free of debris. And then the very last, the very next thing you need to do is, if you already have an intake manifold or you're using your existing one or whatever, make sure it's clean, free of debris, and cover this valley. Don't let anything get into it. Even while you're waiting a day or two to do your push rod length determination, don't let any dust or anything get in here. You wanna make sure everything's clean at all times. So, again, thanks for watching the videos, guys. 302budgetbuild.com. Comments or questions, put them below. The likes are always appreciated, and thanks for watching.